that way. Hey, Oliver, go that way. Amen. Go get your dad. Let dad take care of him for a while. <laughs> About time, dad. Well, amen. Let me uh, make a, just a couple statements before I share the word with you. It's good to see how many giant killers we got out here in the house. Hey, amen. Some of, some of y'all, you need to take a bunch of these home with you and stick them everywhere to remind you, I am a giant killer. Hey, we want to uh, we want to recognize Gerald, uh, Jerry and Carol Stranton married 50 years. Is it today? Is today you're where are they at? Where are they at? Stacy, where are they at? Where? Hey! Where are they? I see she's raising his her hand. He ain't, there you go. Amen. Congratulations. Kathy and I are going to hit 40 years so we, this year, so we only got 10 behind you. Praise the Lord. That is awesome. Also, many of you have gotten the, the email about uh, Rachel Lindbergh's going to be uh, her home going. You know, I think so many times um, we get so enamored with this life that we, we forget we're just passing through this life. We, this is not our home. You, you may think by getting a, a nice house and a nice job and, and all the luxuries that you have that this is your home. This is not your home. You're just passing through. Home is on the other side. Eternity is with Jesus. So when I say uh, Rachel's home going, she's home. She's home. Now, I know there's a sadness for us because we miss, miss her. But her, man, she's loving her some Jesus right now. She, and she'd she be thinking the rest of us, yeah, I'll see you when you get here. But right now, I'm happy. So let's, uh, the, uh, there's an email, the e-blast that's went out to give you the information about the uh, visitation, August 3rd at S. Draw dolls? Well, you all know the place. Um, August 3rd from 6 to 7, the service will be at 7. So we'll be praying and we're going to believe God for a great celebration of a home going. Amen? Listen to me. When I go to be with Jesus and my big old body is in that casket, you better be celebrating. Because I ain't missing none of you. I'm, I want you to have a party. But listen, I don't want you to say, oh, don't he look good? What I want you to say is, oh, my gosh, he's moving. Because Jesus doesn't raise me up. <laughs> Amen. All right, I'm going to uh, finish this message up. And for those of you that are uh, guests with us today, I am not Scott Reese. But Scott Reese will be back next week. Hey, don't be... Some of you think, man, about time, we'll get rid of him, Kenny up there preaching. So he'll be with us uh, next week. Uh, he, is, he is fired up, ready to go, and it's going to be an incredible Sunday. So make sure that you call all those people that have known I was going to be preaching while he was gone. You can tell them, okay, Scott's coming back. You guys can come back to church now. So I want to finish up this message about being a giant killer and... Um, you know, every one of us go through times in our lives where we face insurmountable challenges. Every one of us have problems and trials and obstacles that rip into our lives. And they're Goliaths. Those are the giants that the Father wants to teach us to, to be victorious in. You know, I heard a song this week that just wrecked me. I mean, I, I went over in the green room um, and, and I was praying and just listening to this song and there was a, a part before the, the video of the song came out where the, where the guy says of, he was talking about the different trials that he was facing in his life. Um, his mother had uh, blood cancer. Um, uh, the hurricane had, you know, almost wiped out their home. Found out that his little brother had colon cancer. And 
stage four colon cancer. And he says, he was praying. He said, Lord, please change all of these things that are going on around me. And then he, re then he realized the better question was, Lord, change me so that I can go through these situations. And many times what I feel that God wants to do to us as believers is change us so that our hearts can be turned towards him so that we could truly become giant killers. And so um, of all the obstacles and all the things that we face, all the trials, they're nothing more than giants. They're the things that the enemy, the, the enemy brings to try to, to keep us from being what God's called us to be. So um, if, you, if you missed any of the messages, you can, you can get them in the comments. They're free. Just tell them you want the first two parts of the giant killer. So this morning, I, up in the first two messages, I gave you five tools to, to use to be giant killers. And this morning, I want to give you the six. I, I want to I talk about praise and worship. Because I believe, according to the word, that praise and worship is a tool to killing giants in our lives. If we, listen, if we really understood praise, we would see that God wants to do so much more in our lives in that part of the service than we really understand. You see, because most of the time, folks, we think praise and worship is just to get us to the preaching. If we get to the preaching, we know we haven't got time long left to get to the end of the service. So many times we come into a service and our minds are everywhere else except the focus of praising and worshiping him. Like, what's for lunch? I mean, you're already starting to think about lunch. Now, especially since I said lunch. We come in and, we, and our minds start wandering around and, you know, we start thinking like, can you believe that person's hairdo? Look at that. You think about things like, man, I hope it don't take long to get out of the parking lot. Wonder what traffic's going to be like. Boy, I hope the bridge is not backed up. Well, it's Sunday. Shouldn't be too bad. I wonder what time the game starts. Wow, the stage looks cool. How did they do that? Did I remember to lock the front door? Man, I can't believe. They, they, I, we got, I can't believe they're sitting in my seat. Why did they get the, why? somebody needs to tell them that's my seat. My spouse better apologize because they were wrong. God, do something in their heart. All the while, we're singing and clapping. We're singing and clapping in the point where we're supposed to be giving our praise to God. And our minds are everywhere except that. Let me give you some truth about God and about praise and worship. I want you to understand God is not narcissistic, needing to be told how wonderful he is. When we come into a place of worship, God's not waiting. He's not some narcissistic attitude waiting. Okay, just keep telling me how wonderful I am. He's not insecure. Doesn't need to be reassured that he's really awesome. That's not why we praise. That's not why we worship. Praise does not stimulate some macho corner of his heart. Oh man, look at them, man, they just make me feel so good when they sing and they worship me. Praise does not motivate him into some type of action to, dis to demonstrate his power. Sometimes we come into a point and we think praise and worship, if I worship and praise him really good, it's going to manipulate him to do something for me. Our praise and worship does not cause him to reward us with his presence. Listen, just to be real honest with you today, folks. Now, don't throw tomatoes at me. He doesn't need our worship. He doesn't need our worship. However, he's seeking Worshippers. He doesn't need our worship. He desires worshipers. Listen, I am the worship. 
Do you get that? I am the worship. He longs for the singer, not the song. He longs for the singer, not the song. A heart as a worshiper is what makes our singing worship. Let me tell you, if you're standing there parroting the words and singing is all reckless love and you're nowhere near the intimacy that God desires, it's not worship. You're just providing your own little concert sing-along. That the person standing next to you is wishing you would, took, would have taken singing lessons. Are you getting it? The heart as a worshiper is what makes singing worship. Not the words. Not the music. So if sometimes we think, man, if that band was a little better, I could probably worship better. You should be able to worship God if somebody was standing up here with a kazoo. Yeah, I'm just being facetious on that one. You realize that, right? Listen, when God created us, he made us kids. He made kids, not a choir. When God created us, he made a family. Not a choir. Get, get this, please. This microphone right here is driving me crazy looking over there. Daniel, you need to do something about this. Sorry, Daniel. It's going to mess him up, I know. A listen, listen to this statement. A love-filled glance from your eyes means so much more than a song parroted from your lips. Just a moment of looking into the Father to tell Him how much you love Him means more than coming in here for 30 minutes of you singing songs that you may not really believe. It's clapping your hands and, and parroting words coming out of your mouth when your mind is, is, is so much somewhere else. Lord, I lift your name on high, reckless love. I wonder how the Cubs are doing today. <laughs> and all the time we think it's worship. We think we're praising God. And God's going, I don't want your, I don't want parroted words. I want you. I want your heart. I want you. I don't need your worship. I don't need your songs. I want you. I want you to come to that point of singing, man, Lord, your reckless love saved me. And I am a wretch. My heart is desperately wicked, but you loved me. That's worship. That's worship. Praise and worship is not just a segment of the service. You get that? Praise and worship is not just a segment of the service. It's a time of being intimate with Jesus. Let me ask you wives something. If your husband came home and said, honey, sit down. We're going to have some heart to heart. We're going to have heart to heart, intimate conversation. You ladies are in shock already. And you sit there and you're ready to re receive intimate communication. Your husband is going to tell you how he feels. And all of a sudden he pulls out a script. It says, I've got, I've got 15 minutes to share with you what I got. And here's what it's this and this and this and this. How many of you ladies are going to be impressed with that? It's not intimacy. But how many times when we come into a service, that's what we give God.
because we've got to keep our schedule. We've got to service, we've got to do this, and we've got to have people out by this time, and you've got to do these three songs, this announcement, this video, this, 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 and this. And God's going, I'm not impressed with that. I'm impressed. I believe God was so impressed this morning when those kids were running up on stage. When our hearts are just broken before him. See, we can't ever forget, folks, God is a lover as well as Lord. He's a lover as well as Lord. He's a, his, his nature, his, the nature that created us is loving. God is a father's heart. You see, the reason he, he, he really wants to get this point across about praise and worship because it is a key element of killing giants. It is a key element of getting you victory, having victory in the midst of trials and struggles in your life. Because whenever you're in a time of praise and worship and our hearts are truly turned toward him, it always opens a door. Whenever you're facing a giant, you need God to walk in to fight your battle for you. Because I don't care how long you've been saved or how much of the Bible, you can't fight and win on your own. You've got to have God on your side. So when we come into a place of worship, it opens a door. When we praise, it opens a door for God to walk in. When you're in a, facing a trial in a difficult situation, you need to find your place in a place of worship, in a place of praise, so that it opens a door and God can walk in and get right in the middle of your situation. Whatever the giant, the answer is praise. Whatever the obstacle, the answer is praise. It's worship. It's coming into that place of, of just loving him. It's that place of, God, I lift my hands and I exalt you. You see, so many times in, in, this, in our time, you listen to a lot of the songs that, that are written. And, and it drives me crazy because I get tired of singing songs to God about me. What are you going to do for me? And if I do this, it's going to give this to me. And to me, I need to be in that place where I lift my hands. And it's not about me. It's about God. You are exalted. You are so wonderful. I lift my hands to you. I get out of myself. And I come. Listen, read the Old Testament. And the greatest praise and hymns and songs were always when the children of Israel sang about him. Let me give you an example. How many of you remember the song, I Will Exalt Thee? You, it didn't matter. I mean, that song was written in like 1974. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Did you, do you feel that anointing? Do you know why? Because we're not singing about us. Our focus is on him. I exalt you, oh God. I exalt you in every situation. I worship you in every situation because you are worthy. You are the most high God. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. There is no name greater than your name. And when we praise him, we open a door. And God walks in the middle of our situation. And we kill giants. Some incredible miracles happened in the Bible. 
because of praise and opening on the door. Jericho, they walked around being quiet, then they shouted praise, opened the door. God walked through and the walls came down. Paul's in a prison cell, chained up and starts to praise. The building starts to shake. The, the doors come off their hinges. Chains come off. Praise opened the door. God walked in. Paul walked out. <laughs> See, whatever you're facing, whatever giant, your reaction has got to be praise. You see, praise is built on two foundations, revelation and thanksgiving. Listen, you cannot praise what you don't know. You can't praise what you don't know. Praise can be limited by your revelation. See, when you read the word and you see that God is good, that gives you revelation to praise. Like this, Psalms 116. He was so kind, so gracious to me. Because of his passion toward me, he made everything right and he restored me. That's revelation. Now you got something to praise him about. When we read the word that says that God is Jehovah Jireh, our provider, that gives us revelation to praise him about. It doesn't matter what your checkbook says. It doesn't matter what your accountant says. You begin to praise him because he said, I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'll take care of you. My seed will never go, go looking for bread. You get that revelation, you can praise him. Philippians 4.19, and this is the same God who takes care of me, will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Revelation, praise. I see you're going to supply my need. Listen, exuberant praise, usually there has been great revelation. Exuberant praise, usually there's been great revelation. When you have a revelation that God created you, that saved you through the cross, raised you to new life, and his DNA is inside of you, purpose and destiny will be, will be fulfilled in your life. Guess what? That creates crazy, crazy praise. How could you stand still? How could you not lift your hands? How could you not worship? How could you not shout? How could you not care what anybody says when you have that revelation that God has created you, saved you, delivered you? He will fight your battles for you. How could you do nothing more than exalt him in praise? The second foundation is thanksgiving. Psalms 100, verse 1 and 2. Lift up a great shout of joy to the Lord. Go ahead and do it. Everyone, everywhere. As you serve him, be glad. Worship him. Sing your way into the presence with joy. You see, when you win, you shout. My, my grandson, my oldest grandson, is he eight? Seven. My oldest grandson, Landon, he's seven. And whenever we're in Africa or he's here, we're always playing games, he and I. He's a little competitive like his Gigi and his mom and his dad. And so, I mean, we'll be playing, you know, old maid, go fish, match. And he just kicks my tail. I mean, and I'm trying to win. And every time he wins, he jumps up and down. He's going, boom, got your grip, Papa. Woo, look at me. I am victorious. Woo! He's dancing around the house because he wins. I remember in, some of you remember this. In, 2000, in April, April 5th, 2015. Get this, Dane. Does that mark a great date in history for you? University of Kentucky was 38-0. Y'all know I'm from Kentucky, so. When they were 38-0, I shouted. I was like my grandson dancing around the living room. It was game, it was game 39, semifinals, national championship. And it became very surreal that we were going to lose. How many of you know there was no celebration going on in my house? It was basically around my house. Anybody opened their mouth. 
will be exited out of these premises. <laughs> Where there is no victory, there's no shouting. When the Bible tells us to shout, it's because the Bible knows we win in all things. We win in all things. Our life should be a shout unto God. We win. When we shout to the Lord, it's like saying, boom, devil. Victory breaks out. I can do my victory dance if I had one. You don't want to see all this in a victory dance. When we praise, it opens a door and the God of heaven steps in and brings the victory. Game over, I win. And in closing, I want to share with you this why, one of the tools of what makes praise victorious. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20. It says, for where two or three are gathered together is my followers, I'm there among them. The word gathered is the word for symphony. There I am in the midst. A tool of praise becoming giant killers, in becoming giant killers, is united praise. So Daniel, where is Daniel? And Delaney was right there and now she's gone. So you all need to get out here. hey. hey. So how many of you remember the verse in Deuteronomy that says one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight? See, I, I want you to get the concept of an incredible concept that takes place when we come together on a Sunday morning and we praise in united praise. One can put a thousand, two can put 10,000. So I've asked Daniel and to... to to sing a song for me. Go, Daniel. <laughs> now great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. No, we'll see how great, how great. Is our God. Okay, wait a minute. Just Daniel singing. Y'all be quiet. You'll get your chance in a minute. So listen. So Daniel just sang, and the word says he put a thousand to flight. Where's Delena? There she is. Now I've asked Delena to sing it with him. Now great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, and how great is our God. Okay, so now the word says, two has put 10,000 to flight. Two, just two has joined and worshiped together. And we put 10,000 of the demonic enemies to flight. Now, listen, I'm going to join them this time. And how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And no we'll see how great, how great. Now listen, now we've put a hundred thousand to flight. One to put a thousand, two put ten thousand, I join in, now we've put a hundred thousand. It's a symphony of praise. And it grows exponentially. The number gets so big as we come into united praise that it can't be calculated. I wanted to try to figure this out. 
How could you calculate this when we add the whole congregation? And I called this mathematician uh, professor, friend of mine in Chicago, and I said, how do you do this equation? He says, the best, about the only way that you could do it is you just have to add zeros. <laughs> and so I said, okay. So now listen, there's probably 300 people here today. So we have 1,000, 10,000, we have 100,000. And when you join us, we add 300,000. We had 300 zeros behind 100,000. I don't even know what that, what that is. Do you see God's trying to say how important it is that when we come together in unified praise, when we come together in a part of not just parenting words, but we come together to worship, to praise him, and we focus on him, and we say how great is our God that he opens a door and he steps in and he pushes back all the darkness, all the evil, all the giants, every obstacle and trial that we would ever face, and he pushes them away. How many of you want to put some giants to flight today? How many of you want to put kill some giants? How many of you want to get the God to step in to the middle of your situation? So let's stand and let's add 300 zeros to this and let's praise Him this morning. The splendor of the King is clothed in majesty. Yes. Let all the earth rejoice. All the earth will rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. Yes. Darkness tries to hide. Come on, worship him, church. Trembles at his voice. Trembles at his voice. Come on, every hand in this house, lift them up the hill. Sing with me, how great is our God. Though we'll see how great, how great is our God. Open that door, let God come in. Come on, sing it again, how great. How great is our God.
see why we come together and we praise? You see why we join and come together as the body of Christ and we just not satisfied to sit home and watch it on TV? You come together and you glorify God together. And you put thousands and ten thousands and hundred thousands and then hundred thousands and three hundred zeros, whatever that is. Folks, you win. You are a giant killer because God loves you so much. So walk out of here today remembering, I'm a giant killer. I'm a giant killer. It doesn't matter what the obstacle is. I'm a giant killer. And when you get into that place and you feel like you're just in a battle, start to praise. And then if you need some help in your praise and you need, other, you need somebody to come stand with you, call a friend and get them over the house and just put on a CD and begin to worship him. And if you need more help, go to J52, three, two, three. Go to, their, go to their community church and just worship with a bunch of people say, man, I just got to get into a house. I got to get into a place where people are worshiping God because I need to open a door so God can come in so I can get victory. Man. Wow. It's good, isn't it, huh? Before we go, I want to just share one. I want to pray for you before you do. Listen, I want to remind you, coming up, August 4th is the uh, River, of, River of Life Day at some park I can't pronounce. Shushaburs, Shushaburs, Shabash Shigata. Schubert. Yeah, whatever. You know where it's at, so that means you'll be there. This is going to be an incredible day that we begin to step in and bring unity to our community. This is not just about us, it's about kingdom purposes. Amen. So we want you to be involved in that. If you haven't signed up to, if you want to be a sponsor, you, you can, you can, you can, you can see Darlene. Yeah, right there. If you want to volunteer, do you still need volunteers? I bet. Yeah. Still need volunteers to, to go and work it. This is going to be a great day to see that, that we're going to honor the, the police department. We're going to just, we're going to just love on people. So we want you to be a part of that. So it's coming up. Don't forget to get signed up for the golf tournament as well. All right. Hold your hands out like this. Father, I thank you so much for this wonderful body, the church, the ecclesia. And I pray a blessing upon them. I pray that all the blessings of Abraham will be upon them. You would bless them coming in and bless them going out. That their barns and their vats would be full. That everything they put their hands to would be blessed, would be anointed. Father, we pray that you would build a hedge of protection around their houses and around their homes and not one plan of the enemy shall come to pass. Dispatch your angels around these families. Lord, we thank you and we love you and we give you great praise because when we do, you come in and we need you. We love you in Jesus' name. Everybody said, remember. God bless you. We'll see you again real soon. Great job.